You don't want to push that the answers buttons. your question, Steve. You push yes. the button. Yes, Steve, I push your button. Yes, because I am a robot. <laughs> yes. And 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 everybody goes, Oh, you're not a robot. I go, Yeah, I'm a really good robot. Yes, you Do are. you remember the the TV, the TV, the movie um Blade Runner? Yes. What was the whole point of the robots? The, the robots the robots were supposed to be as human as absolutely possible without being able to come to Earth. They had to stay out because they were too realistic. What? No. It's true. That's why he chased after him. If they gained the Earth, he had to go in and capture them. No. Or kill them. Just, you know. No. Okay, fine. But <clears throat> how did he... Did they know they were robots? That was a gray area. The concept was they weren't supposed to know, but somehow they knew, which is why they could use that test on them, and it would show that they were robots. Well, the robots didn't do the test. Not the robots didn't know. They would ask, right. ask them a series of questions, which then the person could tell if they were a robot. But yes. the robot didn't know they were a robot, so I'm a robot. Yep. There's my new name. See my name down there? But you already know you're a robot. Oh, yeah, there you Scott go. Thomas EV Entertainment. I am a robot. I'm a really good robot. But you're not an electric vehicle. Well, technically you are. You can carry EV. people. Yeah, That's I'm what electric. EV is, electric vehicle. What do you think? Uh, yeah. I'm mobile. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. It works for me. All if right. you were to hand me a gallon of milk and I carried it, that would be a vehicle transporting milk. That is correct. There you and go. You, you could become a pizza delivery robot. That's right. An EV. <laughs> All right. Do your you thing. Why do you try to ruin everything? Coming at you in three. Welcome to the Don't Know Show. It's time to unwind and leave your worries behind. If it's windy where you are, then <laughs> watch our show. It'll still be windy when the show's over, but at least you'll have watched our show. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. And I'm unwinding while Steve's winding me up. This is a show. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're not as good at this as I am, are you? No, I'm not. Because now I forgot what I normally say. This is a talk show about bad life decisions. It is. Very bad life decisions. It's all about what happened to us before we started recording. What did, it lead, what did it lead to? A podcast, a live Twitch stream, and a YouTube show. Yep. We're going to talk about what we know is going on in the world. But before we get to that, please go down there, like, subscribe, share, um, tell all your friends, tell all your enemies, tell people you don't even know to watch the show. Yeah, we're going to talk about what we've noticed is going on in the world today. Uh, let's you escape for a little while, but it is so easy to derail you. Of course it is. Why is that? It's always been that way. That I can do things off the top of my head with no problem, but if I'm doing things off the top of my head, it's hard to get back to script. There's no script. This is an this, outline. Yeah. It's an this, outline at best. This first, well, yeah, the way we do it is, but yeah. I stick to that little brain. And if, and if I start with something else, I have trouble going back to that beginning. Okay, what is the key to all of our stuff? I'll make it easy on you. The key to all of our stuff is it's an out cue. We, Once you get to the out cue, you start talking. Talk, 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 talk. And it doesn't matter what we talk about as long as we talk. Right, right. So just talk. It wouldn't matter if you did it right or wrong. Just don't stop. Yes. That's sort of true and not really true. It's 100% true. No, we're still supposed to say those three things so that it works. It's a talk show. It's a talk show. No, it can't be. Therefore, if you... I don't think robots talking, are allowed on talk shows yet. Yeah, they are. Okay. I know they're on videos. And this is a video talk show, so I guess it's okay. Because I don't want to get in trouble because you're a robot, you know. I don't want to get fined. I know they won't fine you because you don't make money. I know I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so anyway, uh, Steve, what do you have in that picture behind you? What does it look like? It looks like a race car trailer. Hauler. 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 We call them haulers. Yeah. And on I'm Thursday... Good. We had the holler parade in Las Vegas. Ooh. Why do you think we had that? Um, apparently, that race is going to start this week. 
Gore. It happened today. Oh, it happened today? Yeah. Okay. It was Thursday. Today's Thank Sunday. You. When do okay. NASCAR races normally take place? Uh, I have absolutely no idea because I don't do NASCAR. Because it's a sport. And again, Scott knows nothing about sports. Well, but I figured have... this is one of those things that could be seven days a week, you know? What seven days a week? They, uh, okay. Like baseball. Baseball can be any day of the week. Football is predominantly Saturday. How many teams are there competing against each other in baseball? 16? I'm just guessing. 16 teams play at the same time. You really know nothing about sports. Well, two teams play at the same time. But Thank you. But there's more than two teams playing at the same time. No. There, there's on one there, field, there are only two teams. That is correct. But on the same day and same time. On the same they're, day, they're yes. not playing at the same time because they're in different time zones, different start times. Right. But that's why when you're watching 32 teams TV and the scores of the other games keep popping up at the bottom. Yeah, but it's not all the teams. Okay. Well, of course not, because some teams have buys. No, no. Okay, bye. Thank you for watching. <laughs> you dork. Um, so how many guys race in a race in NASCAR? 24, 7, 8, 3, 3, 30, 30, greater than 32. Why are you giving me dirty things? That's naughty. Don't give me naughty. 37. That's a weird number. Uh, yeah, somewhere around 37, 38 cars. Okay. And they all race against each other at the same time on the same track. Kurt, well, yeah. So that why would they? So so if there's a racetrack here and a racetrack in Phoenix and a racetrack in California, how would they race every day? Well, I'm thinking not only there's a lot more than 37 people does, that does, race. Does it hurt? you? you really? A lot more. I would assume so. I mean, we have that many races every night in the streets of downtown Milwaukee. Okay, we're talking NASCAR. We're talking a specific um Okay. I will I will concur that those cars cost a lot more than the street. Why are you cars. being stupid? I'm just telling you what I think, not being stupid. Yeah, you are. The term We're is talking ignorant. about NASCAR races, right? Okay. The guys driving on your street are not driving in NASCAR races. I realized that too. I was just making a point that there's a lot of race car drivers out there. There can't be just 37 because they had today, to, they had to go the, to pre races to make sure they qualify. No, they no, no, it's not. No, they don't have qualifying races before each one of these. Not in the way you're saying it. Today for NASCAR Cup Series, the benchmark is set at 40 cars. Okay, there can be more, but it's around 40, 40 cars. Okay. Okay. The qualifying happens on the Friday or Saturday before the race. Okay. You don't know how car racing works. I at certainly all? do not. I only I drove a at race car all? one time in my life on a dirt track. Okay. Not a NASCAR. No. They drive on asphalt. Actually, it was nine. Well, it was, yeah, it was the 1976 Trans Am. Okay. So they only turn left unless they're on a road course. There's a few road courses now. A few more road courses. Which I think is a good idea. I I don't even know how to talk to you about this because well, you talk to me like you're trying to teach me. But you're being I do stupid. Learn things, Steve. You're telling me the guys in the NASCAR race were driving down your street today. I did not say that. Oh, at, at night. Sorry. Well, not only that, I said downtown Milwaukee, and I did not say they were driving down the street. I said they were street racing. And street okay, racing that means is not people NASCAR who want race. to race, which that means is not that NASCAR racing. I understand that. I was so going they, on farther, but you interrupted me as usual to make your point. 
Well, I'm we just trying to stop. I'm just trying to stop you from spreading more in incorrect uh, information. I don't even know what it is. It's not even really information. It's imagination. You asked me a question. I answer to the best of my ability. If it is an incorrect answer, you're supposed to say, no, Scott, you're close. It should be like this. And I go, oh, that's a No, cool but you're idea. not even listening to what I'm saying. I always listen to what you say. Just sometimes but the pony the is ear. pink. Why would the pony be pink? Because it's a Mustang, and it's from the Barbie movie, and it's pink. Okay, I haven't seen the Barbie movie yet, but that oh, would make God. sense. Hello, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi. Well, you do know that. How do you know that? Well, because it's always Barbie and Ken, and all Barbie stuff is pink. I did not know she had a Mustang. I thought okay. she had something else. So, no. The Hello, Barbie, and the Hi, Ken thing. From the song by Aqua. Oh. Okay. I'm a Barbie that, girl in a Barbie world. Okay, we're talking about the Barbie movie that just came out this year. Right. And that is, like, one of the trends. Like, they'll have these these videos like on TikTok or on on uh well that would make sense real yes. or or instagram yep and it'll be a bunch of girls walking past these they go hi barbie hi barbie hi barbie, hi, barbie. yeah they're barbie. all got barbies they're it's, all cats, it's, right? it, it's from the movie yeah and then when a guy goes by i go hi ken <laughs> okay yeah never it's mind. very easy that way you can't forget names The place I, I was at today, sure. everybody's like, I don't remember your name. I haven't seen you in 30 years. What happened when you, when did you lose your life and you have no idea what's going on outside the world anymore? Pretty much when. After uh, COVID? I went to, no, uh, slightly before that. It's when I was working seven days a week, 12 to 16 hours a day. For but weren't you years. working with people? Kind of, sort of, but it's different. What do you it's talk to the, the people thing. about? Well, if I'm driving, I am inputting on what they are talking about in a humorous way, which makes them all laugh, and then my tips get bigger. But how do you know what they're talking about? I don't know. I just know things. Well, you you um, even said that. It's weird except, what I know and what I don't know. It's yeah. Just yeah, weird. well, you don't know any of the stuff from our show, so well, you're going to have to start putting up subjects so we start getting back into what you know. So know. next weekend, they're in Phoenix. Okay. The weekend after that, they're in Bristol. Then the weekend after that, they're at the uh, Circuit of America. Is that Road America? Would they change that to Circuit of America? Good question. Because isn't Road of America in Wisconsin? Yeah. I raced that from okay. motorcycles. Yeah. They call it Road America. Yeah. You used to call it Road America. Where's the okay. Circuit of America? Uh... Circuit of America. Oh, Travis County, Texas. Okay. Is where's which Bristol is it? Because I know it's not the one in in Wisconsin. Bristol Motor Speedway? Yeah. It was in Bristol. Bristol what? Because we have Bristol, Wisconsin. That's where the Renaissance Fair is. I don't recall seeing a racetrack. It's in Tennessee. Okay. Uh, and then after Circuit of America, they go to Richmond. Not Richmond, Illinois, either. Rich, what? We got Richmond, Wisconsin, too. Well, it's only 10 minutes from here. And then Martinsville. But, yeah, so each week they have a race in a different um, racetrack. Okay. And all of the cars go. Okay. Sometimes they get a snail to drive, and they go, wow, look at that S car go. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it so was I, funny, I, Steve. You've totally derailed me that you know nothing about NASCAR. You've known this before. We've talked about it. I go like, what? All I know is that their cars are very low to the ground. The, they're designed to literally come apart on impact to save the driver's life. No, it, no, they're no, they're not. They are. Those are street they, cars. These cars are not designed to come apart. They have a roll cage inside there that's supposed to withstand impact and stay intact, my friend. That's what I I said. The car disintegrates around the roll cage. I didn't no, say the word roll cage yet. No, no, it doesn't. I have read that more than once, so I know I'm right on this one. You're talking Those about cars are designed cars. to save the driver's life. You're talking about street cars. Street cars are designed to be destroyed to, to get the impact. 
at 200 miles an hour, these cars are not designed to come apart. Well, they certainly do when they have an accident. No, it's they like don't. Watching a Volkswagen thing. No, bing, no, bing, no, bing, they, bing, bing. And then, then the guy gets out of the cab. I'm okay. No, they don't. But they're really, really low to the ground. For somebody, and I mean, for remember, somebody, remember when they hit that that thing in your in the track in the the, the vent in the track or whatever, <laughs> ripped out the bottom of the car because they're so low to the ground. Uh, yeah, no. See, and that was from a, a, a subject you had that you talked about. No, yeah, yeah. For something you've not seen and don't know. The don't know show. Bang. See, car did not come apart. Well, it has not cleared yet. Okay, now it's clear. I can see it. Uh, All right, here they go. Here they go. Uh, There's truck. Yep. Whee! Oopsie. Bang. See, did not come apart. Stayed together. Hey, that. wait a minute. Woo! Wait a minute. This is NASCAR. I'm NASCAR thinking trucks. Formula Racing. Yeah, you're thinking of the wrong vehicles. Again, uh, look. Why look, did you just look. say that in the first place? Well, I don't know what you were thinking about. Because look, look, see, stay together. You know, Didn't NASCAR everything trucks, I say sound like a Formula Race car? Look at that car. Stay together. Yeah, see? Watch this. Whee! Yeah, a little piece got ripped off there, but look at that car's upside down, baby, and it's all one piece. Not break apart. See, now, if, no, no, if no. you had not gone and mentioned that what I was talking about was formula racing, I would have been fine, I but no. But I don't know if any race cars are designed to come apart. The formula race cars are. When they get in an accident, they... No. They come the shot. No, they it's like when you're driving wall. down the highway and they got those barrels on the high on the by the things that if you run into them, highway, they clasp, clasp, you don't clasp, drive clasp. on the highway. These guys race on racetracks. These are professional racers. You've got All to right. stop talking about street racers. All right, Steve, let's go back to something for me now. I had a fortune cookie today, and this is perfect. The trouble with resisting temptation is it may never come again. So, Steve, stop resisting temptation. You're weird. All right, so NASCAR was here this weekend. I see that. Not the Indy cars, the NASCARs. Got it. Like you know the difference between the two. What is the major difference between Indy car and NASCAR? Well, obviously, they're completely different automobiles because they're really super low to the ground. The they're both cars. really low to the ground. Go ahead. Is, yeah. There's there is one major difference. It's two styles of racing, and I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the tires. Is it the formula cars that have the slicks? Open wheel racing. Have you ever heard that term? Well, yeah, it's, there's no, no mud flaps, no fenders, nothing. That's a formula car. The Indy yeah. car. The Indy cars. Formula cars have stuff like bigger fairings and high tech and stuff like that. But yeah, it's open wheel racing. Okay. NASCARs weigh twice as much and have half the tires. So they burn the tires up fast. Okay. Okay. I might remember some of it. We'll see later in the future. We're going to ask you at the end of the show. This will be a quiz. <laughs> but I don't remember what I had for lunch. Yeah, and then I ask you, and then you rattle off what you've eaten the whole week. Oh, yeah. And actually, I think I do know what I had for lunch. Exactly. Yes, I know what we had for lunch today. Do you have chicken fingers at the bowling alley? Did not. This is a picture from the bus run that I took on Thursday to Whirly Ball. Oh, in uh, in Schaumburg? In Brookfield. The, in this Brookfield? is people getting ready to play Whirly Ball. Whirly Ball is very cool. It so for those cool. of you who don't know, Scott doesn't know what Whirly Ball is because he doesn't know what NASCAR is. What is I, Whirly Ball, Scott? It's it's a cross between bumper cars and lacrosse. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, because you got the little thing. And it's a wiffle ball instead of a hard ball that can knock you off the... But, yeah, and it's fun. And you drive around with your two teams and you got to 
use the wiffle ball, which goes in a net in a cuppy holder thrower thing. And you got to get it to hit the target. Yep. And you're driving around in bumper cars. It yep. is pretty cool. So instead of getting tackled, your car just gets hit, which makes you go like this and miss your target. Or drop the ball and the air team scoops it up. Exactly. So there's whirly ball on this side, bowling nice. alley here, whirly ball on this side. I nice. did not take a picture of it, but I found out if you go upstairs, mm -hmm. laser tag. Oh, nice. And another bowling alley. Very nice. So um, what was this, a team building? It was a, a an employee thank you or appreciation party. Nice. Very cool. Yep. And then the season party. Very cool party. Well, beginning of season. It's for places. How can it be a thank you if it's beginning of season? Because they're getting ready to start. They open up in two weeks. So this was like, thank you for all, you know, be, they're all former employees. So they've been doing this. Actually, I, I yeah. Let's it's, back this up a little bit. Who did okay. you drive? It was Gordy's. They own a bar restaurant and a boat dealership. So technically, they really they're off-season, so they're not really open, but yet there's, they, there's people that work year-round. And they own this. They don't own this. This is where they two went. They're from Lake Geneva or Fontana. Okay. And it's a thank you party for coming back to work and work with us this season. And getting right. Well, technically, half the people have already been started doing. I don't get the whole thing because I wasn't in on the meeting. All I know is that these are most it's a of thank the you party. Yeah, most of these employees have been with the company for a while. Team they building. have they have high loyalty retention. Stay stay working with us. Yes. Nice. Very people. cool. Yeah. Where is Brookfield? Um, Brookfield, Illinois, by Brookfield Zoo. No, Brookfield, Wisconsin. It's by oh, okay. Waukesha. Okay. Where's Waukesha by? Milwaukee, Steve. North Everything? or south? I don't know whether it's, it's or, or, west, or west of Milwaukee, Steve. I, east would be bad. Yeah, East would be very wet. Unless it's on a boat. Yeah. So So it's west. Okay. You you know if you're going from my Dasher house. Dasher and Dancer and Donder and Blitzer. Yeah, and, them. If you're at my house and you are going to the airport, you take 43 until you get just outside. 43! 43! Glen, Glendale. 45! I'm on, I'm just on. before you get to Glendale, you get to Moreland Road. It's the last exit before you get to Glendale. You oh, exit there cool and place. you take that north and you go four miles and you're there. A lot of suburbs of uh, M Milwaukee people live in this area. That's why they built this there, you think? Pretty much. Matter yeah, of fact, cool. just to tell you how much it's grown I drove 1.6 miles from where I was with these people to go get Portillo's. When I work with you, I've grown a lot. I believe you. Oh, no, I've grown a lot. Sorry. Yeah, that's it. It makes perfect sense, Steve. Go, go with the first one. All so right. anyway, those are the pictures behind us. Yeah, so we've uh, pretty much killed a half hour already. Well, 20 minutes anyway, yeah. No. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we started before, right? It's been a half hour. We must killed a half hour already. Sure. <laughs> now, awesome. the cool, cool thing is you've come up with some very interesting information that some people might not know. Well, so you know I will not be in um, Las Vegas. Next week. Next week. Correct. And everybody from my family who lives in Chicago flies down to Florida on Sunday. Okay. But I go in on Saturday. That would make perfect sense. Well, and why does that make perfect sense? We've talked about this before. Let's see if you know why. Well, the real reason that everybody probably does know is you are so anal retentive. You have to make sure everything's set perfectly. No. That's, that's a good reason, but that's not why I leave <laughs> a day ahead of time. Uh... I'm flying from Pacific time to Eastern time. Her, yeah, the, no, the nonstop flights are amazingly expensive now. Yes. Like three times more than if you have one stop. Yep. So you have to do the layover, which. So even with time. one stop to save three times, you know, it's still worth it. But that's still another two hours. So now I lose three hours plus the two hour stop 
Plus, guess what's happening on Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning? Look okay. at the subjects. Oh. Uh, Not a trick question. Read the message. Read the subject board. Uh, well, we just had the leap day, so it's not that. Why is other sleep? Is Keep it reading about... leap day. Keep reading the subjects. Oh, leap, leap days day. occur four years. Okay. Give, give... Daylight saving time. Oh, is that it's this weekend or next weekend? Well, if you're watching YouTube, it's this weekend. Oh, I thought we had two more weeks. We only have one week. Yeah. So well, that's, that's another good. hour. Yeah, because we spring forward. So if I came in on Sunday, I'd have to wake up at like four or five in the morning, Vegas time, then lose three hours, then lose another hour for daylight saving time, which is four hours. So then I'm going to be exhausted and then everybody wants to go out to dinner and then we got to get up early and go golfing the next day, which now is an hour earlier. So to wake up to be at the golf course at seven means I'd be waking up at 2 a.m. Vegas time. Okay. That ain't happening, dude. Mm, yeah. That's about when so, I'd be going to bed. So I go in. Yeah. So I go in a day early so I can start trying, trying to, I've already started Acclimate. waking up earlier. Yeah, I'm getting, you know, started waking up four o'clock here, which still isn't early enough. This four o'clock here is still eight o'clock after daylight saving time. Okay. Something bothering you? No. Well, Goobers is, I forgot to give him his treats. So he's like chewing on my ankles. So he is now jumping up on the box going, gimme, gimme, gimme. Here he is right on schedule. Yeah. Uh, so, so you want to see something funny? Yes, Steve. I want to see something funny. Why did this not do this? Oh, I don't know. All right. All, that right. Didn't... All right. So I'm just going to bring this up. I guess I could share this. Do I want to share this? No. All right. So wait, maybe I can copy and paste it. Control C. Mm. Well, do I have notepad? I got Word. Let's see if this opens. Cool. What do we got? All right. So. How much do you know about Leap Day? Besides the fact that it's every four years and it has something to do with. Okay. See, there, there is your first don't know show error. It's not every four years. Can you read the small writing? Down not there? yet. It's still blurry. You have to wait for it to focus. It will focus. There it goes. Can you read that or do you make it bigger? Oh, it needs to be bigger. All right. Wait, it's not moving. Why is it not? Why can, <laughs> why can I, like, I not move it over? I don't know, but I do like the riveting thing. All what right. The? Hang on, hang on, hang on. I can see it sort of now. Riveting news, it's leap day. Leap day. Now it's all blurry because you moved I, I, well, Stop. I'm trying to. Wait, where is it? Here we go. Uh, okay, I'm really starting to get pissed off here okay what happens if you grab the dot above everything in the middle i i don't have a dot above everything though hang on let me just do what i'm trying to do here what dot well on the other screen it had a dot when you only saw part of the screen i don't know how to do this. i'm 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 there we go what the okay Oh, it's about every four years, not every four years. All right. So that's what. Yeah. That's, that's so what you that see that? Is. Yeah. So it occurs only about every four years. So, so that's got to be like pretty straightforward, right? Pretty easy to, to calculate and figure out, right? If you're a mathematician. <laughs> so, it, well, I, I, I made the subject to this clear as mud. So I appreciate that, Steve. Um, I gotta do this because if we can read it, it, it would be on, fun. Bring it, bring it up on the screen. So, here's our subject board. Okay, so a leap day occurs almost every four years in the Gregorian calendar, the most widely used calendar in the world. However, there's a slight nuance to this. Here's the breakdown. You ready? Sure, follow along. 
Most years divisible by four, these are leap years, with February having 29 days instead of 28, except for century years. Years divisible by 100 are not leap years unless they are also divisible by 400, which means years like 1700, 1800, 1900 were not leap years, while 1600 and 2000 were. Therefore, leap years don't occur exactly every four years, but quite frequently to ensure our calendar stays in line with years revolution. Got it? Got it. What the hell thought that was a good idea? Now, did you I follow do, that? Did I, you follow that? Well, kind of sort of because I do remember. I don't remember those. Oh, so you know things. that it's divisible by 100, but also divisible by No, that's by the part I did not remember. Okay, what that's I the part. Re- yeah. What I did remember was from school is that the calendar and spring and all that sort of stuff based on the rotation and everything of the earth. And, it, and it's not an exact time. So they had to add that quarter day every four years is the way we were taught it, which apparently after what you just read, it's not every four years. Right. Exactly. Not every four years. So I just said not every four years. Isn't that cool information? Don't know show. The don't know show. That's so awesome that we don't know shit. Yeah. It takes the earth 365.24 Two one nine zero days to orbit the sun, which is not two point two five, and the point two four two one nine zero days to go around is an entire reason why we have leap year. Yep, I am so glad that you muddied that up for us, Steve. Yeah, but the whole divide by a hundred, unless you can also divide it by four hundred, which is pretty freaky, right? Like, who would think of that? Apparently, this day causes problems. No. And I never really thought about it, but you can't have that as a birthday on your driver's license. Did yes, you know but if I recall correctly, you do get to choose if you want it to be the 28th or the 1st. Right. So here's, here is the, the simplest way people think about how to choose their birthday if they don't know. Well, how would I choose? Okay. Well, you were born in February, so you want your birthday to be in February. Then you want February 28th, right? Yes. Oh, you were born the day after February 28th. So then that would be March 1st, right? <laughs> just pick I'm whatever confused. day you want. Yep. Pick yep. whatever day you want. We just, on the news last night, they showed, or two nights ago, they showed the first baby born at 12 or whatever a.m. on leap day. And like New Year baby. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, obviously they win a whole bunch of free stuff for this stuff here too. But they were well, the first question they ask is what day are you going to celebrate on? And they said March 1st, yeah, because they were born the day after February 28th. Yep, so it's a, it's a fun day to get remarried, yeah, why not? Unique date, it's just stupid stuff like that. Uh, what else can't you have? You know, what I never thought of. When you go to select your birthday down on those little things where you got to put in your birthday. Oh, yeah. I wonder if the 29th is even there. That's I didn't find a web page that has one. But next time you're out there doing that and you got to put your birthday in. Okay. Is that what? I'll do that on my website. No, my website doesn't have that. It's got something else. You got to do like an alcohol thing. Yeah. Um, I think. Therefore, I am. Never mind. I stopped thinking already. So go to your next thing. Um, no, you, I got to go here now. Oh, it's time to do the GPM. Budweiser, let's sit now. That's not going to let me do that. Uh, Did you do a GPM yeah. this week? Budweiser. Okay, here we go. So let's go. Zoom meeting, share, share, share. Month. Zero two. Day. 29 year. Let's just pick that year. Huh, let me in. <laughs> so it's not a drop down. Uh, I should have went back and seen it was a drop down. Too late now. All right, never mind. I should have looked and seen a drop down at 29. I was there. Let me just type it in. But apparently, you just type in anything you want. <laughs> I'm a liar. All right, so what do you want me to do now? A genuine positivity message. Oh, you want me to do it? Okay. Well, I already did it, but. 
All right, our genuine positivity this 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 minute this this week is uh, penned by uh, uh, Scott Thomas, Fun Guy the Entertainer, and Scott would like you to know: with spring just around the corner, it is a signal that things are once again starting anew. Take this sign from nature, and use the what? The Ditrius. Ditrius of the past yes. as fertilizer? Ditritus. You got to say the second T. Ditritus, Ditritus of the past as fertilizer for your fresh growth. Fun guy, the entertainer. Yes. I was going to actually use it as the word of the week, too, because I had, I didn't know if you knew what the word meant. Does anybody know what the word means? Well, you basically, it's, it's rubbish, uh, you know, like. It's waste or debris of any kind. Pretty That's much, not, yeah. But why did you pick that use? Why? And you were doing so good. You didn't you have to use a big word. It's not a big word. Take this so sign. It's eight letters. It's not take, big. Take. Okay. I'm going to show everyone on the screen how big of a word this is. Look. How yeah. big? Yeah, Steve, go look ahead how and just big, increase the size look of the how box. Big, look how big the word is. Oh, you such a It is nut. a big word. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. It is now, Steve, because you it's made a, it that it's way. It's a big word. I didn't. Why? Do you know that word? Do you use that word? I have used it many times. Really? Yes. And people where you live understand it. Well, all right. <laughs> it. <laughs> Who are you trying to impress? Only certain people get it. It's because I talked to the, uh, I have a friend who's a landscaper and he's the one that used that word first. He says, the nice thing about doing this job at this one location is he gets to take the detritus and put it in a big pile with dirt and it turns into some phenomenal mulch. And I go, what the hell is the detritus? To, the detritus. See, I have trouble saying it too. Yeah. He tried to. He goes, oh, well, that's that was my teacher in school who taught me that word, and I like it, so I keep using it. So it's not something that you use on a regular basis. I, no, but I do use it probably a couple times a year. So there is a club in, in, uh, in my York golf bag, yes. Called the Algonquin Table. And it's a, it's a club where smart people go. Oh, it's why I don't and, know it. And well, if you ever got picked, you'd be the annoying guy going there trying to tell everybody how cool you are. And they'd go, Well, you know, that's rubbish. You go, Well, actually, the proper use of a word would be a ditritus. And if you did ditritus, that would be the proper use of yes. rubbish or debris. Uh huh. Uh huh. You'd be that guy. Yeah. 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 No, I wouldn't. Yeah, you would be. No. It comes out yeah. first. If somebody else says it a different way, I don't change it. Okay. I've uh, never been that guy. I'm yeah, the goofy that, guy. I'm not the ass, well, asshole. You're that guy. guy. You're that guy. Trust me, you're that guy. Oh, I just got to remind everybody that I am a robot. Uh, I am a not a human being. I am a robot. I am a really, really good robot. Damn. Do That's I have you, to plug you in again? I, I, Peggy, I plug know. Steve in. And I don't even know. He's looping. Where does the cable go? <laughs> I, I, I should have guessed it was going to go there one of these times. Come on. You got to go for it. Okay. So, so we kind of covered daylight saving time already. Okay. I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about, about daylight saving time. I was just talking about the fact that the reason that I leave for Florida so early is to try and avoid some Yes, you managed to uh, tie in your vacation to our show. I get it. Well, we talked about that, but no, just why I do it. And then remind, and you didn't know. Don't know show. I did not know. So it's a good thing I told you. Yes, it would be very, very weird for me if you didn't tell me. But you can, did you know that social media still has power? Well, as long as there's electricity, it's got power. Where you plug it in. Um, I believe we used the story last week where we talked about, um, I'm pretty sure we did, uh, Wendy's doing surge pricing. Yes. 
Did well, you see? We how didn't fast finish it. We started it, and something came up. All right. So, well, it doesn't matter because did you see how fast that they backed off of it? Yeah, I, yeah, I saw that already last night. So the original story came out on February twenty sixth. Okay, on February twenty eighth. Here's the headlines. No, Wendy says it isn't planning to introduce surge pricing. They were they were misunderstood. That's not what we said we were going to do. <laughs> we were going to spend twenty million dollars on signs and another ten million dollars on the infrastructure so we could do surge pricing. Uh, uh, it was uh, it was something else. Yeah, <laughs> it was it wasn't it was. It wasn't surge pricing. Well, considering that all the stores are getting new signs anyway, because everything's interactive, you know, they're using monitors for everything, not just signage. So I don't know. I think it was only, I don't remember where it was, but there was a, a stock market style restaurant. And we covered it on the show and I couldn't find the article on it really quickly. Um, but it had a ticker thing going across. And as people came in and bought stuff, the price would go up, right? Okay, right. And then you could buy like beer and they had different beers and 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 different beers if everybody was ordering Coors, then the Coors price would go up, but the Budweiser, Bud Light price would go down. And then you could buy Bud Light cheaper. Okay. So, so this whole idea of surge pricing in restaurants kind of been done, right? Right. So there is a restaurant in London that actually is doing this. Uh, the high-end Soho restaurant, where every table has a champagne call button, is now charging 25 cents less for its a la carte menu during off-peak times. But instead of doing surge pricing, they're doing discounts when they're not busy. Okay. So it's, it's kind of Uber-style pricing. However, it's not. Right? Right. It's it's there. Here's their set price. And if the restaurant's not busy and you come in at a time when they're not busy, they're going to charge you less. Okay. I get it. So that's cool. Anywhere from 25% to 15% less. That's pretty good. Sure. Um, I mean, yeah. It, well, it's kind of like, you know, the early bird diner and stuff like that. If you get in there before... 4.30, you get discounted rates. The same kind. Right. Well, there's happy hours everywhere, too. That's yeah. kind of surprising. Uh, right. Not everywhere. There are some places that that's they're illegal. illegal to have. Yep. So you just make it that price all day, and that's not a happy hour. Exactly. Um, But, you know, this place can afford to do something like this because the average cost, the average cost uh, for two meals is about 140 bucks. Yeah. So... It's a higher end, you know, it, 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 it's a higher end place. So I thought that was cool, right? I get it. Now, Monday night customers can get Russian caviar for about $50 compared okay. to the regular price of $68. All right. So, so it's, like, it's like a teaspoon, right? Yeah, exactly. But the point is it's less than what you would normally pay for. Yeah, yep. Yep, yep, during, yep, yep. During not busy time. So it's kind of gimmicky. It's kind of cool, right? It is. Right. It's kind of funny because we had a lot of conversations today at the memorial. And, uh, you know, people just talk about all oh, yeah, sorts of stuff. Yeah, you didn't even talk about that. Yeah. So no, people it, don't even know about the memorial, so. Yeah. Uh, my brother-in-law passed away a couple weeks ago, and we had the memorial today. And um, one of the jokes that everybody was saying is it's like, Weddings and funerals is the only time we all see each other. And it's been like 30 years since we've seen some of these people because we're at, you know, we went through all the wedding stage, then life, right? And now all of a sudden people keep kicking off. So it's weird. And we were talking they're, about they're, that. They're dying, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's why that's why we just have parties and say, let's just get together, see everybody before they die. Exactly. Just go with your gut on this, Scott. What do you think? Whether it's going to work or not, I did not know this was still a thing. Oh, the next subject. I uh -huh. see. 
Did you know um, that? Okay. Back in high school, I played tennis for one year. Okay. I played uh, tennis too. But and, and you know I the thing called natural gut tennis strings? I, I remember you can get natural gut violin and guitar strings and stuff like that, but I don't remember tennis strings. You can get natural gut tennis uh, violin strings too? Yes. So you don't know show. It might be the viol. It's for it's for the deeper one. It's not for the high pitched one. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to have a more, a more better soothing sound when you play it. Because you know violins can be a little squeaky. Lamb gut strings. Yeah. Oh shit! Plain gut strings are now exclusively half rectified, twisted, unsplit lamb gut. The traditional string method made in Italy. Island cellos at upright bass. I didn't know that this was. I thought everything was synthetic now. Like the pros today still use natural gut strings. Right. Now, natural gut strings for um, tennis rackets are cow intestine. Okay. Okay. It's just because I looked it up. It would make sense be, for the main reason that tennis racket strings are thicker, whereas violin strings are relatively thin. Yeah, I mean, most people use nylon and polyester. Yes. There are some Kevlar strings now, too, but the pros are still using natural gut strings. I did, That floors me. And the reason it makes me kind of surprised too is because in my brain, which we know is not normal, I see synthet the synthetic stuff as being stronger and have more, not just resilience, but you you mean it's more better? You're gonna use that again? No, wow. I can't power. believe you used the word. There's wait, wait, let me, let me, let me. What, what is the word? What is the word you used? Which one? You used the big word. The ditritus. 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 Yeah, ditritus. You use ditritus, but you can't figure out a better word for more better. Well, it's it's not just that. It's it's got more more because it's so hard. The synthetic stuff is so hard that you're when you hit the ball, you got more it's like when you're playing golf, right? The golf balls have gotten they've been remain um, rebuilt so that when you hit them they go farther right because it's they're synthetic okay if you say so to me the synthetic stuff is designed to be stronger and give you more power but what i think again just thinking this is my personal thought the natural gut gives you more control you know what i'm saying because the synthetic no, is no very idea. hard and rigid. So when you hit it, you got power up the wazoo. Wham! Nice and hard. However, you got the natural gut, there's a little bit more give to it so you can control. Like when they've been those back spins and stuff like that on the ball. Thank you, John Macaron. I don't know. That's that's just what I got in my head from what I heard. Don't know show doesn't know. Exactly. But that if you look tension. it up, I might be 100% right. I might not be, but there's it a says it has better tension retention. It comes back more than the other stuff. The other stuff stretches and becomes and doesn't right. come back as much. Yeah, it provides the most energy. It provides the most energy return, meaning the most efficient string. I do like that word. It remains return. soft. It remains soft at high tensions, while other materials tend to stiffen dramatically. This allows gut string to enable players to string rather tightly to improve ball control without losing much rebound efficiency power without greatly increasing impact shock, which can hurt the elbow and other joints. I was so there. Tighter and not hurt yourself. You were close. But that's See, crazy. Sometimes I know some weird things. Well, the fact you know about the violins. But they make natural gut strings. I'm sure it's not just violins. I believe cellos do also. Well, yeah, it said that. I said that. Mm -hmm. 
Violins, viola, cello, upright bass. That's so weird. Violin, viola, cello, bass. Violin, viola, cello, bass. That's, yeah. That's just crazy. Yay. I didn't know that. The Don't Know Show didn't know and that. It wasn't even my subject. Yay. Twice. None of these are your subject. You don't put subjects up anymore. I did last week and the week before. And you forgot. No, we used them. You forgot, though. You put them up. All right. What's next? We still uh, got some we, time. What do we got? Two more? Probably. <laughs> it all depends on how crazy you go. All right. Well, let's. let's all right. So skip Santa Rudolph? Claus is using diesel in his reindeer. Yeah, you want to you want to skip Rudolph? Uh, okay. Or you want to do it? I don't know what it is. I didn't read it. It's conspiracy. You know who theory. Rudolph Diesel is? No. Rudolph Diesel, diesel fuel. Okay. He created the pressure ignited heat engine, commonly known as the diesel engine. Right. Okay. Did you know? That the diesel engine is supposed to be way, 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 way more efficient, like 75% more efficient compared to the 10% of, of steam engines or gas-powered cars. Okay. 75% efficient compared to steam engines and gas-powered cars. That was 10%. The, the theory, yes. No, they are. So that means that if they're not, that... We've managed to somehow fix them, you know. Right. Hence the conspiracy theory. Well, no. Well, no. Oh, there's okay. more. On how he died. Oh, okay. He, he was really starting to drive this forward and all that and make it a name for himself. Okay. On September 29th, 1913. Diesel disappeared from a steamer en route to London. His body re was recovered on the shore days later. The circumstances surrounding his death are still a mystery. Some believe he may have committed suicide. Why? The guy just invented these lenses was making a fortune. While others speculate that he was murdered by the coal industry. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Now... We know what the automobile industry has done to small startup stock car companies. We right. know what the from your buddy in uh, oil industry has done to anybody who wanted to make cars more efficient. Right. So, duh, it's no conspiracy about it. It's real. On the time of his death. He was on his way to England to attend the groundbreaking of a new diesel engine plant and meet with the British Navy about installing his engine on their submarines. Yep. And guess what? Until nuclear power happened, they were diesel powered because it worked. Yeah. Uh, let's see. One of the quotes. It is likely that diesel did not throw himself overboard. That's funny. Yeah. Unless, of course, the sirens got to him and he jumped overboard to go to the sirens. So there is a new restaurant in New York City. Okay. And it's called the Frog Club. Okay. I would like to introduce you to their webpage. Okay. I do like the frog in the window. This is their the front door. Okay. This is not like those signs in New York City and the Hardhead area and all that stuff. Those are not taken down. Those are still up. That's the front door to the restaurant. There's no place to click on this web page to go anywhere else. See what it says? Frog Club New York City. That's it. There is this web page does nothing else. That's it. That's all it does. Freaky. A lot of mystery behind this place. Okay? okay. You're not allowed to take pictures inside. But you saw you saw the the address, right? Yes. 86. That that yes. 
because it's located at 86 Bedford Street. It 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 had a grand opening February 14th. Okay. Okay. What does it mean when you 86 something at a restaurant? Uh throw it out. You're right. So there is 10 rules for you that you should obey or get 86th from the frog club. Okay. Ready? Number sure. one. No call, no show for reservation. Okay. Oh. Makes sense. Yeah. Exclusive club. You don't show up. Boom. You're out. Taking photos inside. This includes bathroom selfies. <laughs> you're you're 86th. Being rude or inappropriate to the team, especially Tony. I have no idea who Tony is. Tony is not the chef. The chef is a female. Um, stealing from or vandalizing the restaurant. 86th. Okay. Right. Number five. This is a tough one. Touching the memorabilia. Thinking about touching the memorabilia. <laughs> Just when six. you read the sign, you instantly think about it. So you got to leave. Yeah, you're, you're, you're 86th. Number six, lying about it being your birthday. Okay. Number seven, they you like to use big words too. Canceling a reservation more than thrice. Ooh. Number eight, becoming dangerously intoxicated. Number nine, requesting a free meal. You're 86th. In and other words, that's 10. going directly to, to influencers. And number 10. Kissing the chef without her consent. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. The final item on the list, kissing the chef without her consent, is in reference to the menu offering a kiss the chef option to kiss the chef and owner, Liz Johnson, for a $1,000. According to the New York Times, one customer took Johnson up on that offer and paid for a kiss on the cheek. That's pretty funny. There you go. Be careful putting that on your uh, uh, on your uh, menu. Right on there. Yep. That's a quick thousand bucks. Yeah, a thousand bucks. That's funny though. But yeah, that is the uh, that's the Frog Club. I mean, it's pretty cool. Let's see if I can get this. Is I mean, that's their that's their homepage, and this is a picture. From Google Earth, of the front of the it's the same, it's the same page. That's it. Yep. No frog. I mean, they took the hard hat signs out because I guess they left one sign up there, but that's it. And the eighty six is missing there. But yeah, pretty cool. Now, what a weird... it is. So don't mm -hmm. get eighty six from the restaurant that has an address eighty six. I like it. So is that about uh, everything we have? Is it time to go on to the word? Ah. Uh... I mean, because all these look like they're more than five minutes. We have well, five anything, minutes. Anything I can do. I can I do can better? Last, I can make it last 105 minutes. <laughs> well, that's very true. So, but yeah, th this has been a good time. Has it been a good time? It has been a good time. I, I like it when, you know, Steve picks on when, me for When I challenge you minutes. on NASCAR? Yeah. Especially since he knows that I know, know much about NASCAR. I, I can't believe you don't know a lot about NASCAR. Would the General Lee be considered a NASCAR car? NASCAR car? Yeah, a car that would be able to race. Well, it was a stock car, so yeah. I mean, it was a moonshiner, but yeah, it was in the it was in the design of a of a NASCAR at that time. Right. Okay. So, How, however, Herbie the Love Bug really would not be a good NASCAR. Um, no, that was a, that was a different kind of race. Yes. That's like a Grand Prix like that they that. did, right? Yeah, it was a Grand Prix type stock. Yeah. Honestly, even though I'm not really into it, I don't have time to sit and watch it. I, I find the Grand Prix style of racing to be very interesting. So they did have, yeah, NASCAR is Duke's a hazard fan. So yes. NASCAR nixes the idea of a General League car. Have pro golfer Bubba Watson drive the car for Tasman Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. So yes and no. Yes, okay. it was a NASCAR style car. 
Okay. Just never raced as a NASCAR. Well, yes and no. In a movie? <laughs> um... Yeah, because I think the one race that we, well, there's multiple races, but one that I remember, it was, again, a dirt track. NASCAR doesn't race on dirt. I realize race, that. But, they used but to race on sand. The General Lee. Daytona Beach. You know that, right? Actually, wasn't the track in South Side of Chicago clay? Not a NASCAR one. What was, was that? No, it was a stock car track, right? Yeah. Because they did they did that the super dangerous super or uh, what do they call it? The figure eight demo derby. Yeah, no, NASCAR doesn't do that. Oh, God, that was... I mean, so many people got hurt on that. Yeah. S stupid. It is. The way they do the demo derby at the Walworth County Fair makes sense. Everybody starts with their cars facing each other, as a roll, and everybody's like, like this. And then when the thing starts, they all back up, and then they start driving around going to right into each other until there's one guy left. That's still dangerous, but that's not as dangerous as doing 70 miles an hour on a figure eight and slamming into somebody on the side okay. of their vehicle. And also, it's usually a square pit, so you're not driving around picking up speed. And it's usually uh, dirt that's wet down, so it's mud, yes. so it's slippery. Exactly. So when you hit the other person, they slide and you can't get traction to really drive yeah. through them. It still makes that satisfying crunch noise that everybody goes, yeah, but it's not as bad oh, as no, it you looks. You still smash them up. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it definitely would be harmful. Yep. We've seen cars start on fire. It, 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 I don't know if it'd be illegal. Is it, is it immoral? Hmm. To do what? What's the word of the week? Oh, connive. Connive is a cool word, isn't it? Do you it's not, do you, do you not, know what well, the we were in a subject and all of a sudden you just and it is i wasn't there it was yet. a segue it was what you thought it was you, you were talking about the general lee so i brought it up and i segued into the word okay. of the week anyway what one of these days some I'm of you people may not know is what a he has a thing about segways he thinks he's the only one that knows how to do them between the two of us yes <laughs> yes but anyway that is a hundred percent to ruin you are my correct, reputation. sir. You are correct, sir. See, Steve connived to ruin my reputation. Secretly. Yep. Connive is to secretly help someone do something dishonest Underline or illegal. Secretly. Yeah, he's not secret about it. He does it all loud and proud. Right. Secretly. Secretly is actually underlined in the definition. Did you see that? Mm, no, I did not. Yeah, and the Oxford de definition is okay. the word secretly is underlined. Secretly. It's a verb to secretly allow and something that's considered immoral, of a, you know what? illegal, wrong, or harmful, or harmful to occur. Exactly. Secretly. However, our show does not connive at all. Right, does. I'm a robot. We've been hiding. Oh, that yeah, that's right. We did that. We, well, but that's, well, yeah, I guess that's sort of dishonest patching you off as a human. That's right. All right. Pass me off as a human. But anyway, Steve, thank you for being in the show today. You're welcome. I'm a robot. It's what I do. Right? Left. Right. Are you trying, are you do your trying spiel. to catch me? Do your spiel. Are you trying to catch me into a loop? Yep. 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 Do it, Steve. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to keep me into a loop. You have to go to the bathroom? No. Okay. What are you in a hurry to end the show for? Well, because I want to go outside. It's still 77 degrees up here. I'm getting kind of warm. So you're not going to wash I'm your clothes? I'm wearing long inside. sleeves. Wash your clothes in Tide. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thank you for watching. And if you feel our show is not a bad life decision, then please subscribe, like, watch our other shows and channels. Um, go down to whatshappened.world. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um,